I know it's been a long time ago, but hey there and welcome to the Code Green Cross channel. As you can see right now in this video, I'm back and you know that I was silent for quite a year, like it was almost one year ago since I uploaded my last video here, in which I stated that I am done with content creation. Now I was saying that I was planning to upload other videos there, but not on a regular basis. However, I didn't manage to actually do that. Now right now in this video, I want to simply explain you what happened in this time frame why I'm back and what I'm planning to do next because what's about to happen from me from code wrinkles and from what I have to do right now it is really huge it is something different but I think that it's something that you would definitely enjoy a lot cool now that we got the intro out let me come back to what happened during this last year so as said last November I have uploaded the last video and my initial plan was that I wanted to upload some other videos but not on a regular cadence however that did not happen and there are several reasons for that first of all i just found out obviously i didn't realize at that point but just maybe a couple of months ago that i needed to step back a little bit it was me not talking to you not because i didn't have anything to say but because it was also my time to listen it was my time to learn and it was also unfortunately my time to go through some difficult i would say challenges in my personal life but all is now sorted out now during this entire year obviously i didn't stop working so uh, around one year ago basically i started a new position at the access group as a divisional software architect and to be honest that was a very very nice and good step for me because i really had a lot to learn there and I learn a lot of things, especially in the idea of, well, in this discussion and hype that we have nowadays with AI. Because initially, believe me, I was also tempted to think, and I was thinking that it's a lot of hype, but actually the value that you get back from it is minimal. Now, obviously with time I have changed my mind, but the reason why this happened is because I was fortunate enough so that people at the access group had enough let's say faith in me that they really put me not in control but let's say out on the forefront with other great individuals and great minds on the for forefront of delivering innovation with AI both for our customers because it was a product company but also on the ways that how we work and we managed to actually go a lot into a lot of different automations that we did with AI and productivity improvements to a point and extent that we arrived, uh, let's say right, uh, I would say starting this summer at, at some point where the entire engineering let's say department of the access group, we started to reorganize the way that we operate engineering based on this whole idea of productivity boost that we can get with AI. Now, the reason for that is obviously because we found out that the main bottleneck of productivity is not necessarily writing code, although obviously there is some bottleneck there, but on all the processes and the way that our teams worked and everything was planned. So we needed to really reshuffle everything. So that's what we have done there. Now, why I wanted to briefly explain you this is because that gave me a platform to really understand how powerful AI can be, but also to deeply understand where we need AI and where what we need is just a simple database query or orchestrate some automations that you can do without AI and that you can even get better results without AI. Because the only thing or the one thing that we need to always keep in mind is to balance that what we use with LLMs, what we nowadays call mostly AI, is something that is probabilistic. But a lot of times we just need some deterministic outputs and for deterministic outputs you don't really need AI or you don't really need LLMs. For me this was a great and a huge learning curve to understand exactly how AI fits in, kind of like going with the innovation, but not going into the hype and staying still real and trying to understand exactly how that can be useful, let's say for my flows, for my development flows, for my team's development flows, but also for the value that we can deliver to customers, for instance. And that was really huge for me. Now, I would like to go back to another step and mention you that probably you already know if you follow me or if you were, uh, if you were a subscriber to this Code Wrinkles channel for a longer time, that I tried out different kind of like things to, let's say, create also some side project or create some 
I don't know, some way to be a little bit more self-sufficient. Now, I have to admit that one of the ways that I was thinking that it kind of like would allow me to be more independent and kind of like mostly work or try to work for myself more and less for others was this idea of content creation. Now, obviously that didn't really go to plan or I got very frustrated about it because, well, there are some mismatches between some of my personal values and the way that kind of like technical education goes nowadays in online. However, that is not a problem of the technical education or how things are done but it's simply just my problem and I was trying to really do things or achieve things that didn't really or 100% align with my personal views and my values on the world and what things would happen. And that caused for me really a lot of frustration that was very difficult to get rid of. I didn't really stop thinking about this idea of wanting to kind of like bring something or be involved in something in a way that I can be more independent and work more for myself and for what I consider important, but I failed a lot of times. But from failure, it's important to understand that, okay, every time you fail, you need to stand up and go further. And I think that I did something during this past year that helped me realize this and made me better understand the way that I want to do things and that was running. So I started to run a lot, even before I stopped doing content, but let's say in the last year, I really ramped it up a lot. Just so for you to get a very, very brief idea is that in this year, like in 2025, till now I have run already 2,800 kilometers. I've completed two marathons and two ultra marathons and also some mountain semi or half marathons as well and they really train almost daily now what that me made to realize is that very often you have some very bad days very bad runs you have very bad races but you need to kind of like keep consistent like no matter what you do have your mission in mind have your goal in mind and try to be consistent on that because consistency adds up over time over long periods of time and it's not something that you can kind of like build very easily right now and i think that all of these type of experiences that i had are cor corroborated with another aspect and let me also briefly mention that aspect because it has to do with my entire career and the way that i evolved as a professional and as a human so i spent quite some time thinking about all the 15 years that I have spent already working in this technology industry. And I have witnessed this industry throughout a lot of different shifts and from different angles and perspectives. Right at the beginning, I learned a lot on how it is to run a, let's call it support organization or a consultancy organization. Then I went into the software engineering and development and I learned how it is to develop an application, how to write code, how it is to be a junior developer. But also I grew a lot with with the help of others and meeting a lot of great people and great minds along the way and I started to have I would say my informal leadership parts where people just started to follow me at work but also off work and we started to do things together and we shifted or I shifted from this idea of just developing by myself just writing code to trying to put together systems that write systems that's the most important thing so I've been part of different setups and different teams we've created small apps we've created also a fair amount of large apps and in the past 12 months I was managing or I managed to work for a product company and I've witnessed on how it is to run your own product like big product to have not only the engineering as part of that delivery but also how do you offer support for that product how do you go to market with the product how do you generally do sales marketing and everything so I learned a lot about how things are done and to see the wider picture so I was exposed to a lot of different areas of technology and what it means to create a product to deliver it and to have a great customer experience in the end because that's the goal of everyone that wants to bring something to the market. Now, obviously, all with all of this, I really started to feel the desire inside me to be the one that's the person that can make its own technology decisions, its own strategic technology decisions that's not, that are not only for myself, but for an entire product or for an entire company. So it's only natural that my next step was this idea of what if I can become my own CTO. I started to have some conversations recently or this year in May or around May with a person that I knew from some leadership trainings that I participated to and 
that person happened to kind of like have a great idea. So we sat together and we discussed that great idea and we decided to co-found a company and to start our own product. And that's why I took this leap of faith and recently quit my job at the Access Group to fully concentrate 100% of being a CTO of Ethereum. So let me also spare a few words about Ethereum, which is the company that we have started together. And it's essentially about leadership. It's something that sits at the crossroads between technology, leadership, and of course, artificial intelligence. So for me, obviously that was a great challenge because all of these are topics that are very high on my interest list or priority list. Now, what this idea is all about is that basically companies they spend around $366 billion a year for leadership development programs. Now, there are studies out there that show that unfortunately the ROI for these leadership programs is somewhere at around 10%. And the reality is that leadership is not at its highest potential in most of the companies. And the reason for that is not that we have bad leaders, but the reason for that is that we have leaders that don't really have access to anything that happens in real time and they need to reactively mostly handle things instead of being proactively, let's say, reminded or told what is actually happening within their organization. So usually it happens that, for instance, if you have a conflict in your team, as a leader, you always or almost always come to know about that conflict only when it is too late. So only when that conflict erupted into something. So our mission is to help 1 million workers to get a better life by having better leaders. Now, if you think about Ethereum, it's something that's not just simply, okay, a leadership development program that you can go, no. Think about something like having your own Yoda on your shoulder all the time. So essentially the idea is that we have access, like the company already has a lot of data. We just need to actually put that data together and with the help of artificial intelligence to simply proactively let leaders know what they could do better or what are some areas where they could improve the life of their employees. It's that simple in the end. And Ben has already more than 20 years of experience in this area of leadership development. I have around 15 years experience in technology and I have a very clear vision on how technology can help us solve real business problems. So together combined, we can do, and I think we can deliver a great product that will change the life of literally 1 million people, or at least 1 million people just for the beginning. Therefore, Ben is the co-founder and the CEO of the company coming with all the, let's say, domain knowledge that he has. And I'm coming with my technology knowledge and my love for leadership and my idea or my skills or my values or vision on how goodly or proper leadership should look like. Like I have a very clear idea in mind of how this needs to be done, especially as a technology leader. And now the question, so what does this mean for the Code Wrinkles channel? Because it obviously has something to do with that. Now, the thing is that right now I made this jump from being a, a full-time, let's say, software architect to being a full-time co-founder and CTO. For me, this is a huge experience. And in a few weeks that I've already worked as a CTO for this a company, I learned a lot of different things that some of them, they don't even have to do with technology, but the way that kind of like how you look for investments, navigating investors, due diligence and other stuff like that, that was very, very valuable to me. So I was thinking that maybe the things that I'm going through right now as a brand new CTO might be valuable if I document them also for other people as well, because a lot of the things that I will be documented, it's not only about being a CTO, but it's about the mindset, it's about challenges that you face. And I think that maybe this is also a good learning opportunity for everyone else. So here is where my Code Wrinkles channel will come in. So I will resume doing some content here, probably around one video per week, in which I will tell you the story of a few things that happened or 
a conclusion to which I have arrived both on technology but also as let's say maybe non-technology related but CTO stuff like estimating costs, how you do forecasts, how you estimate burn rates for your product and so on and so forth. Possibly I will also try to resume some live coding where I will go through live coding session but this time with what I call AI assisted engineering because just a small parenthesis the application that we already have we have around 80,000 lines of code and I haven't written manually even one line of code and still I think that this product in now has the most sound foundation of really any product that I have ever worked with in the past 15 years. However, it needs to be said that not everything can be done within a video. So that's why if you want the very deep technical uh, things in a written format and experiences, I have recently started a Substack newsletter called Architect to CTO. So you will find the link to that newsletter in the description of this video or if you search CTO to Architect, sorry, Architect to CTO, you will for sure find it. So don't miss it out and join that newsletter because really, I would like here on this channel to do videos about everything, but to be honest, I can't really do or not everything is suitable to be said in a video and a lot of times, very often, it's important to have a written documentation of how things happen or how things are done so that you can even save them and come back to them time and time again and have easier access instead of kind of like thinking I remember maybe I heard something in a video let me search the video first and then let me go through the entire video to maybe just find one thing that might be important for me in one certain moment and by the way both the newsletter there and obviously this channel here is totally for free so you don't need to pay anything for that now for a brief summary what you can expect is starting this week to have at least one weekly video in which i go into one topic that was from my point of view very important for myself in recent weeks regarding what it means to be a CTO. Some of those videos will be deeply technical or software architectural style of videos or technical decision making. Some of them will be just kind of like hints of what the life of a CTO looks like with also some boring things that is not technical and that I hate but it still needs to be done. So if you're new to this channel and you didn't subscribe already and you find this idea interesting don't be shy and hit the subscribe button also hit the notification bell so that you get always notified whenever something new happens on this channel and yeah this being said thank you very much for watching and until the next time i wish you the very best